In my last video, I was talking about how emotional processes and thought processes are intertwined within the human brain, at least as intertwined as the stripes on a barber pole. From an evolutionary standpoint, this finding makes good sense. In most of the animal kingdom, where the prefrontal lobes are absent or very small, Emotions necessarily provide all or nearly all of the foundation for decision-making. Presumably, as the pre-human forebrain began to enlarge its logical decision-making processes, these thought processes did not evolve in isolation. Rather, they evolved as a complement to the emotional pathways that were already there. So they needed an apparatus one that would relate emotions to other information with the aim of finding which logical choices were emotionally acceptable and would relay the results of this prefrontal processing to emotion centers elsewhere in the brain. That, in essence, is what the ventromedial prefrontal cortex seems to do. The logical thought and decision-making systems that work hand-in-glove with this emotion-mediating apparatus consider available information together with the limited range of choices the emotion-based systems have pulled up, and they devise a plan of action. That, in a nutshell, is the main job of the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. There are, of course, gray areas here. We don't know precisely how all these various comparisons and choices are actually made, or exactly how the dorsolateral and ventromedial parts of the prefrontal cortex interact but we have come far enough to see that emotions play a key part in processes once thought to be entirely logical, and that indeed, for human decision-making and social behavior to be effective, it is necessary for our emotions and our analytical thought processes to interact. This conclusion may surprise those of us accustomed to thinking of pristine reason as emotion-free. But it certainly won't surprise diplomats, lawyers, judges, businessmen, and a wide range of others, all too aware that emotions are vital to sound decision-making. Nor should it surprise scientists bent on discovering the truth in a setting that is supposed to be emotion-free, but which in fact is so littered with emotion-based predilections that it must continually be managed with elaborate procedures designed to combat bias. It's not hard to see this intertwined emotion and reason at work in any number of imagined scenarios. For instance, if you run into a snake, to use our earlier example, a simple fight-or-flight response is unlikely to serve you as well as more thoughtful action. Time permitting, you should probably consider whether the snake is dangerous, aroused, moving, inclined to strike, too far away to do you harm, deserving of your full attention, and so on. Output from such frontal lobe processing, besides getting relayed elsewhere in the brain, gets relayed to emotion generators like the amygdala via the ventromedial prefrontal cortex. Depending on the results of this processing, the amygdala may be further aroused or calmed, and the fight-or-flight response may be intensified or damped. In this way, the brain's relatively new system of emotion-related thought and thought-related emotion in the prefrontal lobes is superimposed over the older emotion systems found in the amygdala, brainstem, hypothalamus, and elsewhere. This, in brief, is how emotions work within the brain. I have intentionally avoided emotional disorders because they include a very broad range of problems, many poorly understood, within the realms of psychology and psychiatric medicine. Those who would like to know more about emotion-related sleep disorders should see my videos on sleep, especially the last three videos in that series. Those who would like to find out more about the role emotions play in dreams should see my dream video on that subject entitled Dreams and Emotions. And for those of you who would like to delve more deeply into this subject of emotions and the brain, you can find more information, plus a good list of sources, in the Emotions chapter of my book, Dream World, How the Brain Dreams and Why.